might get rid of my phones here. Um, hope you can hear me well and welcome to a new stream. Uh, it's music message time right now and welcome to a, new a bunch stream. of uh, um, uh, a bunch of new libraries are coming out and are announced during uh, the Music Messe and one developer, Fluffy Audio, came out with a brand new library yesterday, which is, let me try that, my Italian is a little bit rusty, uh, Rinascimento, I would say. Um, so this thing is a medieval themed library with tons of instruments i think around 30 instruments in there we will take a closer look in a bit and uh yeah we're going to put some hands on the library and check it out here we have the library folder rina shimento um instruments so you got two four seven different categories brass flutes keys lutes so stringed instruments percussion reeds and strings uh, let me first of all mute my phone here so um welcome everybody who just tuned in so we're taking a look at rina Shimento today fluffy audio new medieval themed library uh as usual we will start with looking through some or maybe all of the instruments we will see how the time goes and try to yeah do something with it um try to stick to the library only let me note that i received an nfr copy of this library for the sake of doing that walkthrough and the video so thanks to fluffy audio for sending that over i'm really looking forward to checking it out so what do we have here? We should, we, should, we should start by loading the first instruments from the brass category, Renaissance Trombone. Um, I just loaded up a few patches beforehand, so it's really kind of a first hands-on. Okay, Modwig controls volume. Has even a slight trumpety tone in the higher register. First of all, the interface. So you have a picture of the instrument, a uh, little explanation to what it's doing. Here we have instrument settings. Uh, tuning, humanized tuning, etc. Velocity control and remapping where you can actually remap vibrato and mod wheel. So we'll take a look at that in a minute if we need to. Hey guys, nice to have you on board. So And this is something that I saw in the walkthrough that Fluffy Audio posted that you uh, medieval instruments pretty much don't have any vibrato and they are recorded without vibrato, but there is a modeled vibrato. Which actually works pretty well. So we can activate that if we want to. We've got some staccato patches here as well. And uh, Paolo already wrote me about it that right now uh, you need to use Modwheel to get them to volume. 
which will be fixed in a coming update as far as I know. So, legato and staccato for the trombone. Let's take a look at the soprano cornet. Actually, it's nice. With the legato, you can play trills. Sounds like a soprano saxophone a little bit in the high register. Uh, so there's a vibrato patch. I assume that this is with a, yeah, right, with a model vibrato. So nice. Uh, staccato as well. Let me check this C2 instant sustain, what that is doing. Okay, it seems to re trigger the note. Okay. So far for functionality, let's take a look at the flutes. Okay, vibrato version. Ashton, nice to see you. So let's take a look at the microphone position. So we got close. Then we got a mid position. And a far position. Ashton, I need this for my Titanic behind the score. Well, uh, the developer is in the chat, so maybe you can make something out. I don't know. Paula, sure. Keep on. Uh, Fluffy Audio is just asking if it's okay to write details. Uh, yeah, definitely. Go ahead and write. And if you guys have questions, uh, there's no better man to ask than Fluffy Audio in the chat, obviously. So with the microphone position, you can actually do a bunch of different mixing positions to... I guess uh, in medieval times, they didn't play any runs. So it's not a runs patch, obviously, but... Uh, how do you like the legato transitions? Actually, they're pretty smooth and the trill function is really neat. So that's really nice. And especially with the, if we feature the close mic more, I think it might be even more realistic.
that's pretty cool let's check out oh, we didn't uh, check the staccato notes That's pretty nice. Okay, let's check the bass recorder. A little bit here, just want to check out. vibrato version legato is a little bit slower so I like it that you can even play relatively short notes with the sustain patch. The level on the instrument a little low for anyone else do you mean in the contact instruments or overall the output in the stream because this is something that i might be able to fix so i might have had the volume a little bit low there uh can also be that my voice is now exploding your speakers sorry for that uh so it's better now uh But overall, it's pretty quiet. Uh, I think I have to admit that as well. So I might just adjust the channel volume. Damn it. <laughs> I had the channel on minus eight or something. So I hope the volume works better now. So that was Sopranino recorder, same a little bit lower, I assume, from Frano recorder. That's nice. I just checked whether it reacts to CC11 for volume. It does not. So you can't really do a Niente fade. Ashton, stay calm. Loot's coming in a minute. <laughs> okay, that's the Tabor pipe. We got a tenor recorder. High and mirror ninety six. Okay, 
And so we got the whole SATB sub 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 quarter family. So, and it's pretty nice that you have the info down here for the instruments if you are not familiar with any of the stuff. Uh, so, I'm not totally into medieval music besides the album that I've done there. Uh, haha, talking about my Karatekos release, which was more Celtic than medieval. Um, but if you're not familiar with anything of that, these. Uh, so uh, just uh, reading and talking at the same time doesn't work. <laughs> Damn multitasking, not working for man. Um, so you got information down here what this instrument is actually about. Let's jump straight into the keys. We have a harpsichord. Funnily enough, the harpsichord is uh, controlled with uh, mod wheel as well. Would be so great if I could play classical music right now. That harpsichord really sounds nice. So there's the second version. Might be great as an add-on, not in the classical sense, using it as a harpsichord, but... I like the sound, that's really lovely. We got an organ. Get different. It's a lovely tone there.
Really, really nice. Uh, I tried that before in the positive organ. I really like that. Really lovely tone. Nice, and then we have a virginal. Not really, 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 really. Uh, uh, small and simple rectangular form of the harpsichord. Okay. Lutes! Okay. Paolo, what is the difference between the open strings and the not open strings versions? to play one chord there. No, the other way around. Is a lute really that deep? There's actually, I only saw that in the walkthrough, there is a strummer included, which is pretty nice. So uh, in the instruments itself, there's uh, fast chords. In major or minor, and you got slow chords. might be a little limited and but it's cool to have anyway and there is a strummer on board so if you play major and minor chords as far as I know and there are different settings so let's raise the tempo a little bit here <laughs> I wonder <laughs> it sounds awkward with the chords <laughs> okay uh, strummer does not work with the chords obviously so down here we have so our glute. Do we have strum presets? Yeah, there we are. And we can switch the notes off that I play. So 
So this is that. Let's check that out with the Baroque guitar. Oh, okay. Down here we have strum keys. Lovely tone there. So we get a strumming patch. Okay. Okay, major and minor in two octaves. Actually, tempo synced. Okay, no, it does not. And again, with the sustains, you can um, activate the strummer again. And we'll, we'll check that out. What uh, Paolo just said that you can change the. Take the strummer off and with the two, as I said, the C and D down here. Actually, make the notes on. works okay then we have the cheetah reno Like the, the noises in between, they are sampled with the strings. The strums only recognize major minor, right? Okay, that... But actually you can enhance the chords with a, with a single notes. Yeah, yeah, the seventh was just invented in the 18th century, I know. <laughs> they didn't have augmented chords in the, in the times. 
sometimes you wish back that times and you just can write a major or minor and you're good to go through the southern part of the co colazione long neck and forward looks a little bit like an oot maybe instrument here okay then we have the galley shown oh an octave instruments instrument So fast chords and slow chords again. How does that thing sound with a with this drummer? So take the notes off. What do we have here? How does it sound with the... the sound of that one that's cool plectrum loot i assume two, two, two. the same as the loot just played with the plectrum Drummer. Let's check that out. Not entirely realistic, but in the background, I think this can work pretty good. Okay, so strings and strings and strings. Let's take a look at the included. How what do we have here? So this is. So 
So mod will control rolls. And some roll performances. A little bit of post EQ. I think can even beef them up a little bit. I mean, it was not about epic and bombastic in medieval times, right? Yeah, claps and soft hits. Very nice addition, definitely. It's pretty good in, in the demos that you have on the website uh, where you can hear uh, how the percussion sounds in really tracks that sounds like from medieval times. So let's go on to the re-, the re, the re, the re There is some cool stuff in here. I think this sounds especially great in the hall mic setting. Although I would play trills only with a minor, uh, just a second or, or minor second or major second. Bass crum horn. It definitely cuts through a mix. <laughs> Okay, that's definitely sounding like an oboe. Ah, <laughs> that might be even working for uh, animation car horns. <laughs> nice. So, Chiaramello Soprano.
Okay, so definitely a little bit Eastern influence there. Can you actually switch off the legato if you don't want? Ah, here. So you can... <laughs> you can do that there again. <laughs> Actually, let's take a look at the legato page here. So what can you do with it? You can maximum legato time. So what happens if I raise that? Okay, gotcha. So with 10, it might be good. Let's take another instrument. I have to admit that, that, that I'm not the biggest fan of medieval wind instruments or, or reed instruments. But I'm no woodwind fan either, so... That sounds really nice. The reverb baked in, so there's no processing going on. So this is a library as is. So the reverb that you're hearing is either that one or the far position. So if you bring it down close. Somehow cool, I really like the uh, microphone positions actually are really doing something. So when you bring the clothes down a little bit, you really hear the instrument go back into the room. So Rausch Pfeife. <coughs> okay, 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 okay. That needed to be. A little bit close to the Chiaramello and Bombard sound. Very, very uh, cut, 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 cut. So... So same chrome horn sound. The some yeah, yeah, yeah. that looks like a pipe. Okay, so you get drone sounds down here and here, and this key actually repeats the note. Pretty nice. I know that it's not possible in real life, but I would wish that you could actually tune the drone sounds. 
Uh, that would be cool. So say, I think you can only just go with a whole instrument. So that would be cool if you actually could decide which uh, key you want the drones to sound in. Without affecting the upper register. So if that's coming in an update, cool. That's great to hear. So, and last but not least, we have the string section. Let's start with a hurdy-gurdy. So if you're not familiar, that's a string instrument that uh, creates sound via, via a wheel that you turn and then the rosin wheel scratches the strings and pretty much gives you an endless sustained sound. And then uh, on the fretboard, you kind of have keys to choose the uh, note you want to play and you have drone notes as well. So let's take a closer look. So down here, we have the drone notes and here actually you can choose the key. If possible at all, I would wish to have the key choice in key switches because that allows you to change the key switch because you I don't, I'm not really sure whether you can learn the key menu. No, you can't. So uh, that will be actually cool to change the key on the fly. So to have the key switches down here to, to change the key for the drone notes. And then, as I said, This you get the melody strings and the drone strings. Oh, down here is another drone. Okay, let's bring in a little bit more room sound. Uh, let's go with a large hall. And the cool thing is they implemented the, there's kind of rhythm instrument integrated, which is located on this key here. Depending on the key you're in, it plays accordingly in the key. So um, you have the drone notes. And on the black keys down here, you have different um, presets for the rhythm. Let's go a little bit slower here. I think, yeah, you can even say, okay, I want to have 12 steps.
Okay, let's do the other way around. Let's see how that sounds. Just want to do a triplet feel here. Yeah, I would love to to change the drones uh, with key switches on the fly. That would be cr pretty cool. Uh, alternative legato. Let's do another key here, like. And then back to G, like going. So yeah, that's the hurdy gurdy. Uh, then we have a baroque violin. I pr I, pr I, pr I presume that's the predecessor of today's violin. I forgot the alt legato. Say to lady, lady, two strings together. Okay, gotcha. So that's pretty nice there. Wonder a little bit what's the I can't change the drone note, right? Depends on where you are at the string. I assume. Let's check out the viella. Who 
can assume where it comes from? Viola? <laughs> okay, let's tune that thing down. If I actually could play keys. So I haven't really figured out what, uh, in what way it defines the root note, well, or the drone note. So that's the C below. <laughs> okay, so it seems up to here it's a C, then G, okay, it's the string, uh, the lower string along the note, okay, gotcha. So, and we have the Rebo function as well. Again, let's put this guy a little bit back into the room. Why there is no staccato for the viola? Actually, with all these instruments, I'm thinking of uh, B. McCreary's uh, score to uh, Da Vinci. So, have the, all these Renaissance instruments in mind there. But I try to not do something along the lines of that when we are actually going to work with it. Um, so let's start with something. I have no idea what we're going to do with it, uh, but at least we're going to do something with it. Uh, I try to stick to the library as much as I can, but maybe I'll add in a little bit of um, uh, other stuff. Uh, 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 let's see where we go. Um wonder what we take as inspiration if we just try to imagine some kind of medieval scene or a gameplay menu for for a medieval game or something like that uh, where we just need some underscoring um oops uh, sorry sorry for that guys hope your speakers didn't explode ah uh, some medieval brahms <laughs> Krumhorn Brahms, that sounds like an idea. Okay, let's just, uh, first of all, uh, going to do some inspiration hunting here and say, okay, medieval comic. Let's just look for a picture that might inspire. Uh, medieval comic village, maybe. Something like that. Okay, so let me open that in a new tab. Okay, so there is the inspiration, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, something a little bit medieval. 
Where is my Cubis project gone? There it is. Um, so, and we start with a little bit of rhythm there. Okay, what? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch you writing that stuff. Um, I'll uh, start with a little pedal note. These instruments were kind of designed for that type of music, modal music. <laughs> That's the boy, right? <laughs> Triple meter law. Okay. So, Paul, yeah, just write the piece. <laughs> I just go out and take some fresh air. Uh, okay, gotta go. Uh, there we go. We start with some rhythm here. Uh, although you write with some uh, triplet stuff, so I have that uh, in mind as well. Um, I guess we go with some... Don't ask me about theoretical things, guys. So let's go to triplets. I'm not going to play anything in here. Actually, let's put it on red. And I need some velocity. Maybe we can use a roll here. Let's see if that works. A little bit late. What's up? Come on. Okay, the roll doesn't work out there. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, and in medieval times they didn't clap on two and four, so they did it on one and three. Wider. Uh, no, actually, I didn't use uh, the the mod wheel roll, 
but this one and it just didn't align to the timing. Um, maybe try again. Ah, there we go. Okay, how does that sound? That's a little bit too soft there. And actually, I... Okay, we have some guy clapping the triplets in the background. He will hate his job, but someone's got to do it. shorter so okay that we have a basic groove let's name that percussion and Duplicate this guy and Ashton, what do you think of starting with the loot? <laughs> so, loot sounds, there we go. Will this be posted for offline viewing later? I tried to think of it and put it on YouTube. Uh, I haven't even put up the last video that I did on another library that came out because I didn't finish that last queue. I need to do that. I didn't have the time yet. Uh, so hopefully I will... I try to come up with something now within the stream and to send something on YouTube afterwards. Well, actually, let's try the auto strummer here and see if we can find something decent. That's too low. Okay, let's go with six steps since we are on triplets. No, actually, we need to stay with eight and do it swinged, I guess, to come up with triplets. I'll do six steps. Actually, Okay, let's try find some basic chord progression there. Uh, let's put that on loop and try to find something. 
Okay, way slower. Still too fast. Okay, let's go with 68. Okay, a little bit more simple. Okay. What do we have? Okay. I think that's nice. Damn it. Okay, that way. No, once more. I think that's nice. Chord scheme there. Okay, oh, well, sixteen strobes missing a note here. Do you always start from nothing or do you ever use a template? I more or less always use templates. It's just now for the sake of just working with the library that I don't start with a template. Just add one bar there. Eh, damn it. I need to put these here on bar. So I'll be able to duplicate it. Right. <clears throat> so. We have the percussion, we have the loot. Let's uh, duplicate that again. And I think we try something with woodwinds here or reed. Let's see. Flutes, let's take the tenor recorder. Now, 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 now. Okay, let's see how that works. Ah, 
Nice reminder, Raphael. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so I add a core track and we add a MIDI track that is named chords and that is not connected. And we can get rid of this guy and we tell the chord track to use chords. Okay, now we're free. Now we are free. So we are starting off in D minor. Okay, need to go on beat. So that's F major and G major. And this is actually where we leave the tonality of D minor. Uh, because we're using the B there instead of the B flat. That gives a little bit of that medieval or Celtic Irish feel. So that's plain C major. and an A minor. Actually, that's there and that's there again. Okay, and then we can copy the whole thing and move that over. So this is what we have so far. Let's check out the tenor recorder. <laughs> we have a D minor break in here. that okay let's just improvise a little bit simple melody there on top okay nice start there Little bit of quantizing, hard quantizing the first note and see what that sounds like. And one at least percussion instrument that's not from the library because I just feel it needs a little bit of oomph in the percussion there. So I'm going with uh, since they come closest, uh, the Drums of War 1, that all library from Cine samples. Okay, going to do this. Uh, this is push that a little bit down. Let's mute that stuff and just record something on top. So 
let's just quantize that a little bit. Let's see how it sounds on its own. Okay, that should work. Back to the lute and the tenor recorder. So actually let's place the lute a little bit more in the back. Uh, it should be no problem at all with the mic position. So if we take the close a little bit down and the mid, keep the far up. And then let's put this a little bit to the right. So if we imagine the state, the lute player sits a little bit in the right corner. And the recorder again, we put a little bit more to the front. So we bring the hall a little bit down, push him a little bit to the left. So he's right here. So we need to add a little bit more there. Uh, first, I think I'm going to duplicate the melody with the recorder as well. Um, let's see if it goes that deep. I don't want to do the um, the octave version of the melody. Okay, it doesn't go that deep. Maybe if we make it very soft and push it a little bit to the right. It's, well, it's very cutting through. that a little bit more silent even. Ah, didn't want to hard quantize, just a little bit. Something different. Ah, okay, put a rest there. Are you going to discover a fair parsley, say Rosemary and Ryan remember me to oh, Okay. Hi Morty, long time no see. And let's duplicate the loot as well. 
I want to bring in that bass lute or bass guitar, bass type guitar thing that one was. See if that works. Let's go with that one. So Actually, I think we need to have that a little bit. Sorry, it uh, sounds like plucked. And we. Okay, we'll keep the bass in the middle. So, okay. When do we get the hurdy gurdy? Yeah, it will come eventually. I uh, think I need to do work around there um, since I can't switch the drone notes. So, just let's rename that. in time uh, bye Ashton see you soon good luck with the Titanic stream have fun with it Just try to come up with, as I said, uh, to bring that in memory again. We have that kind of medieval scene, and we try to have a little bit of music for that. So. 
I let that run on repeat. Gonna take a short break now and uh, try to have an idea where we take it from here in the next step. I think I just need a B part for that and uh, flesh it out a little bit more. So with the image in mind, this is what we have so far. It's a little bit like I have some RPG running in the background on hold. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, we flesh out later on. Let's just come up with a little B section. Okay, definitely going to major here.
Okay, going with Evan C there. Yeah, I think that works. So I'll just copy over the percussion here to have a rhythm. What did I have? Maybe even end up in major. No. <laughs> okay. Let's try that. We can always change later on, so... If I even could play... Sounds nice with the flutes later on. Okay, let's try not to quantize it too hard. Let's stick with the rhythm pattern there. Maybe use the Dorian Skay there. Uh, Let's keep it as is. And actually, we need to move these guys a little bit forward. So, we're rolling that chord into the bead. I think that works. 
Well, let's just note the chords here. So we have an F major, C major. Damn it! Come on. D minor. A minor. Back to F major. C. Oh, actually, I think we are here. Other way around, starting on F, going to C. to B major, B flat major, and A, probably rather A7. And back to D minor. So definitely need to step up the percussion game a little bit there. So change the rhythm here. So that clap guy in the back is going crazy. The tambourine guy actually now does quarter notes. and shuffling the whole thing. So, what else do we have in terms of sounds? Let's try something here. No, it's not green sleeves. For fuck's sake. Just some random noise there. The clap guy can work harder. And then we have these guys on board. And let's Bring in, what do we have? We have F, C, D, A, F, C, B, A. Okay, because what I want to do, um, I want to bring, I want to bring in the hurdy gurdy, but just the rhythm parts. And since it is not tunable at the moment. We need to kind of work, 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 work a bit because we make an F version. So, and obviously we need to have, do we need 16 steps? And swing the whole thing. Um, 
Um, is Paolo still there? Can you actually save these presets? Well, I can just save it as... So let's just save it as F. So let's name the Herdy F. And then four, five Herdies, F, C, D, A, and B flat. So this is Herdy C. Will be easier in the future when, when uh, Fluffy Audio updates that thing that you can change the key within the instrument. on way to get around the sound from those hands <laughs> um, okay so we have the C hurdy uh, the F and then we have the C one so we can actually copy that and why the Freaking hell is that Can you automate the key instead? Not yet. Will be implemented in an update. It's not there yet. That's why I need to do it that way now. Ah Kate. Damn it. So let's just, okay, make it short. So let's take the D here. And then we duplicate it again. With an A. And last but not least, duplicate it again. For a BB. I know that it's kind of misusing the way the instrument is intended to use, but I really like to have that rhythm stuff underneath uh, the B part. So we copy that over. We have D, then we have A, and we go back to F, C, and then we have B, B, uh, B flat. Well, it's actually just one bar, uh, one beat. A back to D. So let's see how that sounds all together. Why is the sound missing in the first B? Let's take another preset here. Uh, maybe because the quantize is activated. Don't yell at me, Paolo. I found it. Uh, 
Uh, okay, need to deactivate that for all of the instruments. So, input quantize off, and for the C as well. So, and to make life a little bit easier there, we are going to group this stuff. Uh, group channel, so hurdy rhythm. Uh, so that we can actually control the whole stuff with just this fader. Okay. So we have just one fader for all the hurdies. See how it works in context. Okay, it seems like we need to put that like forty or fifty. Negative track delay to bring them on time. Okay, make it short here. Uh, we'll just do let's just do an audio export and align it. Don't want to go too crazy here. Damn it. So we put that into our folder. Actually just use the song folder. So how do you rhythm? That's forty four twenty four and put it into okay. Quiet for a moment. I could also have said just render in place. So I mute that now and let's check this out. There's some high noise in there that I don't want to have. So Okay, that's fine. So, <laughs> what the hell? I think the rhythm just don't work out. Oh, well, let's try audio quantizing to eighth triplets. Let's see what happens. So that just doesn't work out the way I intended to work out. <laughs> um, we delete that. I think I would need the rhythms. So first need to make sure it works on the first one. So let's check that out. I think 
I just need to change the rhythm there. So when we're actually in 16th. So, okay, when I bring that in with the drone notes, at first might sound better so let's just check the timing let's see how that works these two Okay, I need to put that all to minus 100. Okay, I think it's starting to work. And it didn't work before because we had the negative track delay just on the first two tracks and not on the other ones. Starting to work. So minus hundred. So Just one bar. Okay, so now we're getting there. Let's see if that works. Okay, overall it works, but I think just the rhythm is a little bit wrong. It's too busy in the trumpet, so we need to have it more like quarter notes, I would say. Less of the triple feel. So bring these down a lot. Actually, we just need these first. Because we're changing after that. Okay, I think that's better in terms of rhythm. So, damn thing is that I need to do that for all instruments now. I think that works better. So, going with eighth. Bear with me, we're nearly there. 
although we haven't had any other instruments in there yet. So um, we need to do that ASAP. So, and last but not least, the B. And let's push it a little bit on the B with Okay, so another test. The thing is that the triplet fear doesn't work out. The triplet counts differently than the and the triplet feel of the percussion. So maybe because of it. What if I change the rate to? Oh. So maybe we need 16 triplets. And then we need 12. Come on. What's up? There we go. Okay. I got the f timing totally wrong on these. So we need um Come on, I think it's auto saving right now. Okay, I just thought it died. Well, actually, we need to put it like this. There we go, finally. Okay. Um, well, we even need more track delay. Um, so before I change all the <laughs> Fluffy, that's a good idea. C, D, A, and B. So C. D. Yeah, 
yeah, sometimes you get lost in the small details, but hopefully in the end it'll be worth it. Let's make that A and let's make that B flat. So there we go. Okay, so now see because when I move it back from the track and move it there again, it gets named accordingly. So Hardy A, and then we have Hardy F, Hardy C, Hardy B for one beat, Hardy A, and back to D. So So, and now we have this, I mean, the track delay is still not really on point. There are two ways to fix that. Either we find out which track delay is the best to have it on bar or export the audio and align it. So I'm going with a negative track delay to find out what it actually is. So let's just lengthen that a little bit to try it out. Minus 150. Might be too much. Okay. Uh, minus hundred forty. I think that should be it. So going to. Forty. As I said, the other and maybe easier way would be to just render it in place and align it visually. Seems like it's pretty much on the beat, but we export it anyway. Okay, didn't delete the old one. Let me do that now. Okay, now again. So now we can mute the hurdy and we have it in. So, and first of all, we need to adjust uh, the guitar stuff here and play in some tenor. Definitely 
spice up the instrument choice there. some more melody instruments there we need the chords a little bit more more there so first let's go with the sixth instrument and quantize the little bit Massive jumps in volume in the in the trumpet. So um, I'm going to compress that a little bit to make it a little bit more even. It's a little bit too fast now, so I'm going to push a little bit back. Okay, needing some... Something like, I mean, we definitely need to put that a little bit in the back. <laughs> well, who said medieval music couldn't be fun? <laughs> But it's way too loud and too much up front. So we push that guy a little bit to the left in the back. And so that's actually the bass crumb horn. And we turn it down. So, Maddie needs a So, let's bring in what we have here. <sighs> Don't wanna really want to use the crumb horns because they are so in the face. But maybe that's exactly what we need here. Let's change that with a 
bass chrome horn for the dual channel. That's even better for bass. Can I just move that over? Duplicate it, bring that back. So you please start on the 12th and you please start on the 12th. Maybe even bring that. Do we have the low A? center <sighs> I hate when that happens there we go So then we don't need the bass chrome horn, so we can take let's see. <laughs> not our fault blame Steinberg. No, actually it's it's a contact issue and not Steinberg. Bass somehow sounds weird there. Not sure whether it's just too loud or maybe it's the line that I'm playing there. Let me check that. Let's switch that around. <laughs> Okay, that's better. I think we just need to fill out the missing chord information. Fill out the missing chord information there. So let's add in. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, an alto record. <laughs> Let's try that for a moment. Let's turn our recorder. 
just flushing out the harmony a little bit there. So now we have just make sure that the uh, velocity is up. So uh, right now, the, even the staccato patches need mod wheel. So we raise that all the way up. Okay, let's check out how the how the violin patch or the viola 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 okay, 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 okay. I don't have a cut 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 Okay, so that might work. And we want a little bit more closer. Not the way that it's intended to use, but still might work uh, for what I have in mind for the rhythm there. Actually, that's that's sixteenth triplets. I guess. Own. So then we push that a little bit to the front, like 15 negative or something. So that is actually the violin. We make that so go up there and then listen to the violin and just the. Okay, let's mix the violin a little bit more to the back, bring up the hall again and push them a little bit to the right. So we just need to double the main melody again. So we still have some melody on top that really cuts through. So let's check out the reads. Uh, can 
put that a little bit. Okay, let's try that. And is there vibrato available? Let's try that. Actually, the key repeat, uh, the note repeat key is actually pretty useful here to put that on top. Let's try that. Actually, I missed the note here. That's a C sharp. A little bit of quantizing. notes maybe we can copy them from the Dulciana and see how that sounds actually we don't need modulation here Okay, unfortunately we don't have a deep A, what's, what's the lowest note, C? Okay, so we can bring that down. So, um, we're getting there. Buffer setting right now. Um, I can compare the buffers. Uh, so question was the buffer setting in Cubase 9. Usually I work on like 256, uh, which gives me around seven to nine milliseconds. I need a new audio interface. I have problems in Windows 10 with my uh, Steinberg MRX. Um, but right now you can compare that because I'm using Azure Link Pro. So it's not that good right now like 23 milliseconds. So um, going to take a short break and uh, listen again what we have. Just make it a loop. And um, yeah, this is what we came up with so far.
Okay. Finishing touches. Um, so for the sake of organization, I'm going to move that a little bit behind. Because I want to duplicate this part. So we need to move that one more. Actually, this guy is from there. Just want to repeat this one more time and flesh it out a little bit more. So we need to have a riser. Oh, sorry. We need to have a riser here. Okay. Um. Auto save. Auto save is uh, necessary. <laughs> And since I have all the contact instances within Cubase, it takes a little bit longer to save. Please get ready. Oh, damn it. Now, there we go. My mic dropped. <laughs> okay, just doing the triplets there with the flutes. Not in cycle mode, please. messed up here modulation is way up putting that there quantize this little guy Okay, let's try that. be better
and just a little rise there and going to add a symbol riser here the take from where else because just using an audio render here i haven't set up the media bay to be sent through the stream audio so i will just bring that in and you need to trust me that it's going to work so just want to light symbol swell there. and turn that way down Tamarine roll, indeed, indeed, that will be nice. Uh, so we need to have that here. And have the modulation going up. Did I study that style of music? No, definitely not. <laughs> Um, actually, right before the stream, I watched some uh, YouTube videos on medieval uh, scales and stuff like that uh, to not totally lose here. I mean, I did a, a Celtic album, uh, Caradacus, uh, which is a little bit similar to medieval style, but overall it's it's just gut feeling. Well, what I think sounds good in... in um, in that style. Let's just add these on top of the strings. Actually, this guy needs to be an octave higher. And do it in 16th triplets. This guy. And let's get him. So let's broaden this guy a little bit. Um, really want to have them sitting on the side. So
Let's bring in the Herdy once more and actually... use the chanters for the final repetition of the melody. So this is her delete. I got all the strings, hurdy gurdy. about the volume a little bit later. Yeah, something like that. I'm just going to repeat uh, the last part here. I'm doing that roll again. Um, So I just want to repeat the last part. I just need to make sure that beginning notes are really on the cut. Didn't even quantize the hurdy there. Actually, it's going till there. Thank you. 
ça. Okay. Uh, let's just cut that hurdy there. Oh, the claps. And a last hit from the tambourine there. Then we need to double that. That was too loud. Oops. That was too loud. So I have modulation pretty much all the way down on this one. Kind of a double feature there. Okay, you could bring in Era now and do some kind of Chen style vocals from there. Uh, not going to do, gonna do it here. Um, so, little bit of mixing involved. Not much, but let's do a little bit. Put it on loop. We have that. And let's see what we have. Actually, let's add just one reverb. And I'm going with... And there... Boston Hall. 1.7. I love that reverb. It just sounds gorgeous. So... Let's put a little bit of compression on the guitar. some little bit of boxiness around here Okay, let's try to add a touch of reverb. Let's see how that sounds. Okay. So let's put the percussion together into a group.
going to over here and just listen. To Okay, I cannot help it. Uh, okay, we might save that for the very first time. I haven't even saved that yet. Uh, no idea. Hope so. Um, so, what we're going to do? Paolo, you're still there? Um, I mean, you know that there are other libraries around and actually I feel that I want to try some of the era vocals on the last part. So I hope that's okay for you. Um, so I want to add... So let's just add a vocal for the very last part. So first of all, save again, because uh, I think so too there that uh, Reminiscente, <laughs> what is it actually called? Uh, Rinascimento. Uh, <laughs> what what do I write here? Re, Renascimento. Anyway, uh, so okay. Ah, uh, book codex, female voices. Let's go with the Celtia. Yeah. Reminiscent. I can pretty much assume it's from the English Reminiscent. Something like memory or... Yeah, that reminds you of something else. Kind of the same word stem as Reminiscent. 
no idea how I come to that. Um, okay, Keldia. I think we need to move the way down. Just adding that behind the last main melody, I think that might add a little bit. That works pretty well. Uh, I will just try whether the. No, actually, it sounds good. Um, bring that a little bit further back in terms of volume and re record that thing. Actually, it's better if she goes all the So, how does that... No, not hard quantized, just a little bit. So, and we still sent this, uh, although there is a lot of reverb going on already, uh, we still sent this, or maybe I will deactivate the reverb here, bring that down, and use a little bit more of the reverb from the hall that we have here. Bring a little bit more up front. <laughs> I think overall that's pretty nice. So there's nothing in the mix that kind of jumps out or feels odd. So actually you can get rid of these guys. So let's give it a little bit of last touch here. Um, That thing on first load always takes ages. That must be kind of a Cubase thing. There we go. So I want to go with, let's go with the US setting a little bit more. Okay, just tad there and a tad there. Then bring in. And last but not least, a little bit of dynamics. I love the new Cubase 9 maximizer. Thing is pretty, pretty cool. So I'm going to lower the volume for you guys a little bit. So let's see how that sounds. Yeah. 
actually I want to add another thing. So Overall, that should be it. Let's give it one last run through. Uh, overall, I think it's a pretty great library and yeah, definitely a great companion for uh, Eduardo Tarilanti's era. There's both a bit in the same field, medieval classical instruments. Uh, they both definitely have their place. And uh, what can I say? Fluffy Audio did an awesome job on this library. Sounds pretty cool. And I can imagine using it a ton in, um, yeah, role, role play games, uh, everything that calls for medieval sounds, especially with a. Uh, with the mix options within the library, it's pretty cool. I really love how you can place the instruments in in the 3D stage and put them to the back when you lower the close mics. Works really, really well in that library. So uh, yeah, overall that's the tune. Anybody, any idea for a name? This uh, is what we did today. Enjoy. <laughs>